Welcome back to the Die by the Sword podcast. If you haven't heard, we're going to be at the Dallas Fan Festival this year, October 19th and 20th at the Irving Convention Center. So if you're planning to go to the Dallas Fan Festival, be sure to come by and say hi at our booth in the Community Zone. Now, if what you need ahead of time is more of like in the dice realm of things, then I would highly recommend checking out our dice partner, NTSD Gaming. You can use the link that is provided on our website to go to their site to check out all of what they have to offer. I have a few sets of their dice, and I absolutely love them. Not only are they beautifully crafted, but they also roll really well, so I highly recommend that. And of course, as always, we want to thank Midnight Syndicate for the use of those ambient sounds you hear in the background of our show. You can check out more of his stuff at youtube.com slash swordcoastsoundscapes. Or if you want to add some of that spooky music or cool, intense battle music that we add to the show, check out Midnight Syndicate. You can find more of their stuff at www.midnightsyndicate.com. You can also always check out our website at www.diebythesordpodcast.com to check out those links to NTSD Gaming or find some character art or cast bios. A link to our merch store is on there as well. So yeah, once again, that's www.diebythesordpodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram. We do have Twitter as well. Um, Or you can email us at diebythesordpodcast at gmail.com. And hey, if you're loving the show or just really want to support us, you can always check out our Patreon page as well. We got lots of great tiers with perks there that you can sign up for, and every little bit helps. All right, I think that's enough from me. So let's head on into this episode. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, dear. Howdy. How's it going? Oh, it's going okay. Yeah, I can't good, complain. Okay. I feel like I'm battling a little something, getting, trying not to get sick, but other than that, doing all right. Yeah, I tell you, I've been battling something since we got back from Japan and South Korea. I was going to say, since the day you was born. All that, too. <laughs> I've always been fighting. Yeah, I feel like... I can feel it. I don't know. I keep telling myself it's just allergies. That's what happens every time I get sick. I'm like, just allergies, just allergies. Positive, positive. <laughs> I feel great. No allergies, no sickness. <laughs> well, that must be nice. It's fantastic. I'm just a little stuffy. Not like feeling sick stuffy. It's just things are congested, but it won't go anywhere. One good sneeze and it's all gone? No, just kidding. <laughs> Maybe. Or it's going to blow my head off from the pressure. <laughs> right. Because that's the worst part of it And with everything. Like, I feel fine otherwise, but because of all the sinus pressure, I've had a really bad headache for several days. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it's like, uh, I hate when it gets, like, right behind. Like, yeah. It's mm-hmm. like, even when you, like, kind of touch your forehead a little bit, it's like, ah. Yup. Like, I'm all tender. <laughs> Do not face. dive that way. <laughs> I, I've done that accidentally, and um, it feels like died accidentally. Some, dive. <laughs> I went, di- oh, dive! Diving. Dive. Yeah, I, I went scuba diving with my upper sinuses closed and didn't know it. Mm-hmm. Feels like someone sticks a knife into your forehead. Yeah, I bet. Oh man, the pressure is already bad enough when you get that deep. You don't want to add any extra pressure. Yeah, and I was doing this for a class, so, you know, it's like, mm. boy, this class sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but last time, but Philip and I were in D.C. I don't think we talked about it. Oh, yeah. we didn't. Oh, but, cool. What happened in D.C.? It's a little work conference that we went to, uh, that we go to every year. It uh, it's, a, it's a pretty grueling conference because, one, it is very intense during the day of learning stuff and whatnot, and then in the evening... They give you some free drinks, and then maybe you want a few more drinks after that. So you go out with Philip and uh, buddy. Make a mistake, Kelsey. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you play a little ring toss game and uh, bet some shots on it. Yeah. 
it all is the bad, bad idea, idea consortium. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, but, it was. Yeah, it, I had a good time in Washington. This is our second time going to that same place, and uh, it was is all right. Yeah, DC is it's 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 good. It's not it's not the best, but it's not it's not bad. As long like as it. I never go back to Orlando, that'd be fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I say that, but the last time we went to Orlando, that was kind of fun. That bar that we went to was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, the monster bar. Yeah. Now, were the like monsters serving drinks or were they part of the both. cast? Yeah, both. <laughs> <laughs> it was full on Halloween themed, you know, spooky kid bar. Yeah. And yeah, that was that was really fun. Ooh, come and get your drinks. Yeah. Scary spooky. I, th- I think there's a pop-up bar in Dallas that's supposed to be like that. That I kind of want to go to. I've seen the I've seen advertisements for it. It does look kind of cool. I haven't uh, I don't know anybody's been there yet, but I'd be curious. I would definitely be curious to go. That that's my uh my cup of tea right there. It's like, that's my jam. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, the, that's what the, we're doing, yeah. A horror show. The the DJ Master of Ceremonies. I don't know what you call him at the Monster Bar. Was really good. Very, oh yeah, yeah, very yeah, engaging. Was. Yeah, that was one of the best parts. Was how yeah. That's cool. Didn't have any Monster Bars here unless you count those clowns in Congress. <laughs> eh, eh. <laughs> Talk about needing a constitution check. Oh, oh, no, no. <laughs> that's just bad. <laughs> so that's a different constitution, sir. <laughs> Keith, what have you been up to? You win any trophies lately? No, I've been. Uh, there hasn't been a tournament yet, but I am playing in one this weekend. Uh, oh, it's the Labor Day Classic or whatever. So, pickleball, I assume. Yes, sir. And uh, playing mixed on Sunday and men's on Monday. Right on, right on. Yeah, but we're kind of getting screwed there uh, because people are, I guess, busy on Labor Day, of course. So there wasn't as many people signed up. So the group above us, the uh, division above us, got combined with ours. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna have a little bit more competition this time. Are you are you excited about it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you nervous? The game. It's weird. Pickleball. Like as you move up. It's like it becomes a different game uh, in a way. Mm-hmm. So there's a sub game inside the game. So we'll see. We'll see if I can hold my own in that in that game. What's the sub game in the game? Is it a secret? Yes. Yeah. Is this like dude uh, where it's uh, plans within plans within plans? Or right, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to bust this pickleball conspiracy wide open. <laughs> so uh, it's just net play. So you can't. Like at the lower levels, you can just bust through people and just hit it hard. And as you get higher in level, they can just block. They're just like, uh, actually, no. And they just they just block it right at your feet. So now you have to play the net game. And it's a little cat and mouse of, ooh, where am I going to put it? Oh, what you going to do with it? Ooh. So. Gotcha, yeah, we'll gotcha. See. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Move my ball. Yeah, you have to Move softly touch ball. the Till you touch the ball too hard, and then the ball gets hit at you. So, uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. Then it goes all over your face. Uh, yeah, it could. That's why they tell you to wear glasses. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> With windshield. Yeah, but anyway, so I'm excited about it. It should be fun, but it'll be it'll be hard. The ball. When a game like no. this starts to get hard, is that better or worse? Like something that's supposed to be just like fun. I mean, I'm playing tournaments, so I want to get to. I'm a four zero right now. If that means anything to the listeners, but I'm trying to get to a five zero. But it's a long, it's a long way. But, but yeah, like at my birthday party when everybody came out, like just you know, just having a good time, smashing the ball around is also really fun. So, it just depends on what you want out of it, I guess. That's the great thing about pickleball to me is you can play with anybody and have a good time, whether it's competitive or just for fun. Right. Yeah. See that. Yeah. See, I I like. That pickleball is a more relaxed sport overall that I can just go out and play and have fun. I don't know how I feel that people have made it even more competitive than it was intended to be. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And everybody like in pro, all the people are coming over from tennis. So Mm -hmm. they're like, 
they're jumping into it too, you know, so they're elevating the pro game. And so <laughs> it's been a lot, it's been kind of cool to see. Yeah. It's the whole, I couldn't win in tennis so now I want to beat everybody in pickleball. Or I got too old for tennis. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going over to pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could say that with baseball and softball. Yeah. People who can't play baseball anymore come to softball. It's true. Yeah. And the pros, they're just, they can just hit it out at will. So they just mm-hmm. come up and they hit it out and they're like, all right, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Like, that's, See, that's to me, nice. that takes the fun out of it. That's just, that's not fun anymore. Mm-hmm. I would agree with you. Yeah. That's me. Never played the game. I don't, yeah. I, I'm still, it's still a mystery to me. It doesn't look fun. Mm-hmm. It is fun. Oh, do you have like super nice paddles and stuff? Or do you have like the uh, Academy cheapies? No, I, I did that for like two weeks. And then my ADHD, like I'm like, I'm going to super hyper focus on this. Uh-huh. And so I was like, all right, I got to spend the money now. So <laughs> I have three different paddles at three different weights and three different brands. Oh, what? For, yeah. So it's stupid. I do the same thing. I spent like I spent probably three thousand dollars on uh, disc golf. And because I hyper focused on that for like two years. And then all of a sudden I was just one day I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> yeah, <we're done. laughs> and so I have thousands of dollars of disc in my closet that are just sitting there. Oh, wow. So do you keep them because you're like one of these days I might get back into it? One of these days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I yeah. might jump back into it. Yeah. Well, and uh, uh, actually, John and Gary, sometimes they're just randomly like, hey, you want to go play some disc golf? And we just randomly play once in a while. Yeah. Oh, so you do. So you, so you will dust them off. You're not like that life is behind me now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Yeah. They were tired. It's <laughs> like I hung up the discs. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, we'll go randomly play sometimes. But I used to play probably three or four times a week. Oh, damn. Of course, with Keith, he's the one that we invite him to play just because we want to hang out, not because we actually want to compete against him. We just assume he's going to beat everybody. We just want to hang out with him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> We so don't count his scores. He... We just count everybody else's. Yeah, I, yeah, my stuff didn't get recorded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like Keith, do you have di- you know disc elbow, so we can go ahead and play. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. We'll start at the shorter T. You go to the longer T and start back there. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving out discs too. As they're about to throw, I'm like, you might want to do this disc instead. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a good time. It's a good time. I'm just gonna throw my putter the whole time. I say, do you let them use yours or are you like hands off of these are professional ones and you guys don't get your loser stink all over. No, there are a couple that are really expensive, so they'll stay in the bag, but for the most part they can use whatever, yeah. Especially if there's a uh, yeah. water hazard. Because I'm oh, lost true, in the too. water hazard, yes. <laughs> I have two. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Absolutely. It's really fun when it lands on its side and you see it roll all the way down into this giant pond. No, oh, you well, do say no. <laughs> and sometimes they roll for a long time. Mm-hmm. It depends on the wind and how you how it landed. Yeah, it could take off. It's gone. But I think the I think the disc manufacturers like pay the parks and stuff to put lakes in, mm-hmm. so that you'll lose the <laughs> disc and then you have to buy more. You have to buy more. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it's a conspiracy. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. The groundskeepers are in charge, yes. They're in charge of the conspiracy. (laughs) And we've hit the silence. I was trying to find a segue somewhere in there to get us into the the episode, but... Speaking of grounds... No, just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of hazards... Yeah, I don't really have a segue there. Anything else we can briefly discuss related to those things that I can find a segue out of? Let's see. We covered diving, pickleball, and um, disc golf. What other Mm -hmm. extreme sports are we into? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Cornhole. (laughs) That, that can be is kind of extreme sometimes. <laughs> Don't take a bag to the face. <laughs> phrasing, John. Phrasing. 
There goes the rating. <laughs> that just sounds like a fun evening. I don't know. Um, but anyway, yeah, I don't know if we'll have a segue out, out of this one. So zero to 10 on the segues this week. Oh, it's no. fine. <laughs> they don't always have to happen. Well, you don't yeah, always this, have a dragon this... flying by when you're flinging a disc golf or a cornhole bag. True, yeah. but, you know. This segue does suck, but speaking of suck, we were trying to find some vampires. <laughs> there you go. I, I like tried it. to save it. I tried to save it. <laughs> Two out of ten. Two out of ten. Um, so, yeah. Who uh, who remembers what happened last time? We we're met a vampire. To... Well, a mm. drampier. A dampier, yeah. Damn, a a dampier. Oh, we've had... Yes. His name was Quinley Bozel. Is that right? Quinley Basdel. Oh. Keith did not kill a baby this time. (laughs) Yeah. Despite my hardest. Yeah. Diego found another secret passage for us. Another secret thing with the uh, the key, huh? So that's, that's fun. And we spent half the episode trying to figure out if we should leave the key. (laughs) <laughs> you did yeah or take it <laughs> uh, i don't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> i was just yeah. like make a decision come on <laughs> i know <laughs> sometimes it can be a little tough mm-hmm. yeah. but apparently he uh, offered us help we help him he helps us so we decided to go meet his master and talk to him, see what's, see if it's beneficial for all parties involved. Mm-hmm. So. so we're off to see the wizard or the master? Yeah, yeah basically. So essentially, your your lead on the Whispering Way, which is your ultimate goal here, have gone cold. Uh, but the closest lead you could find is the Vampire Underground, because they might know where the Whispering Way is going. So you help the, whisp- you help the Vampire Underground with their problem, and they help you with yours. Essentially, is how this is working out. Yes, and we learned, despite being undead, the vampires oppose the Whispering Way. They do. They'll starve to death. They don't want to lose their food. Jesus was a lich? Question mark. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that we had that discussion. <laughs> the age old. More question. subtle than that, but yeah, we had. <laughs> <laughs> was it though? No, <laughs> overtly <Maybe>. subtle. <laughs> Not naming names, but <laughs> <laughs> it was a discussion because we went over a zombie, lich, undead, mummy, cadaver, all the various types of undead creatures that you could think of. Uh, so, yeah, made a new ally with Quinley. Basdel, who told you his life story, essentially. Yeah, I didn't write they that part. His mama. Oh, that's mm-hmm. right. He's Blade. That's Basically, right. yeah. Yeah. So he's trying to track down the killers as well. Uh, and he told you that the best way to get toward the vampire underground was to go to Restoration Park. Next oh. door to Restoration Park. Oh, uh, yes. I thought we were going to just follow him. The way he came. Well, he's just going to get you back to the surface and then go to Restoration Park. He'll go with you. Aubrin will not go with you. Yeah, oh, Aubrin. We're done with that chicken. guy. <laughs> yeah. Found out he he keeping secrets, too. Oh, yeah, huh? He's playing oh, all he's aloof. Part of a secret society. What do you expect? When you get invited to the party, you're supposed to tell all your secrets to your guests. Not unless you're invited to the secret society. Especially when they save you from dragon or bone dragons. Bone devils. Bone devils. That's what it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we saved him. He could have told us. Saved him from getting boned. But maybe he wanted to be boned. I mean, Oop. he kept trying to get pork chop alone. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> he showed in. Pork chop does like to play hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> He's well, feeling froggy. It helps that poor shop is hard to get, so he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't actually have to play that. He just is. Figuratively and literally slippery. 
They're just after the tongue. <laughs> it's the blood squirting eyes. Gets them every time. It does. So Quinley does, you know, yeah, Quinley does inform you that's probably best to go at night because, you know, vampires. What time is it now? It was probably midday when you got to, well, no, we said it was like the, the museum was closing. So you went after close, I would assume. So it's probably evening. So you're probably fine if you wanted to go now. Yeah, we can go now. Uh, So if we look at the map to know where you're going, uh, you were at the Quartifo Archives, which was number 12 on the map. Kind of on the outside the city walls area. So now we're going inside the city walls. Yeah, we're going inside. 14 is there in the center, that big park in the middle. Is uh is fourteen by our hotel? No, we're on the other. We're on the outside of the, the city wall. We're in the cheap hotels, not the lo- big luxury. Oh, that's hotels. right. I was thinking right. you want to stay with the yeah, locals. The, yeah, yeah. You want to be touristy. You had talked about kind of staying over there, but then decided you know you kind of wanted to be out near like the Houndstooth area, so you can go to that bar more often. Yeah, I was thinking about running, getting my wolf. You know. It's not a horrible idea. Do Might be good Pablo to have your wolf. Uh, Pablo, probably not good underground, but I mean, the wolf, wolves usually have, you know, a smell sense. Like, yeah. So okay. that could, be, I'll, uh, that could come in handy. I was going to yeah. say, I'll the kind of trail off and crack him. The only thing to keep in mind going underground is what size is your wolf? He is large. So oh. it might be a little cramped underground for him. Uh-oh. I didn't know he was large. That's exactly why one of the reasons I don't want him, Pablo, he's large as well. We might also want to consider that when Diego changes size, he might have a problem. Diego might want to consider that. Yeah. He might have to stay yeah. small, small Diego. Yeah, there may be places that you're fine, but I remember what Quinley did mention about how they decided like after basically they raised the town up and that everything that was the first level became the basement. So it's basically the underground levels or it's kind of like underground streets and underground buildings. So he'd have have to squish. Okay. Well, I'll I'll leave him then. Out of curiosity, is that something that's actually in the, the manual, like it explicitly de- 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 details that, or rather, whatever mm-hmm. resource we're drawing from, it actually explicitly t- says that. Yes, it does. Hmm. I was only asking simply because um, <clears throat> I went on a trip to uh, Seattle, and they actually also have. It was this whole thing where they like renovated the entire city, and like their everyone everybody's first floor turned into a basement because they just like raise the entire city so that they could have, well, anyway, for a whole bunch of reasons, but it's just interesting that I've now discussed this twice. (laughs) I mean, it's kind of a a cool history of the area uh, that they just kind of raised it. So first levels became basements, basements became sub basements and so on. So they technically raised the roofs. They did. Uh-huh. Uh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so deciding to not, not that I don't want you to have your wolf with you, I just wanted to make sure that you knew. No, it does sound like that, Gary. It does uh-huh. sound like that. <laughs> you hate animal <laughs> companions. You're so glad that two of them are put away. <laughs> but you made I a just don't case. want to kill an animal <laughs> companion. <laughs> Dang, is looking at you outside side eye right Whatever, now. Whatever, you kill a person, but you won't kill an animal companion? Yes. Hey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> killing players versus killing innocent dogs. Like, no, we're not here for that. We're we save the dog no matter what. Exactly. Every player character, every single one of us can die, but that wolf companion, no, no. I draw the line there. Especially if, wolves. Yeah. If when I'm preparing these scenarios and stuff, if I see anything about an animal that's like, because I know like the beginning of 
Rise of the Rune Lords, there's a whole a spot where a dog is supposed to come out and like the dog is like gutted or whatever. And that's just part of the scene setting for that because goblins hate dogs. And I'm like, I skip over that every time. I can't do that. Yeah, no, thanks. I can mention that goblins hate dogs without actually explaining what happens to said dog by these goblins. I like it. It is not necessary. I think that's a good call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. I guess we'll he- head into the park then. Cool. 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 So then I will switch the map over to the park. All right. So are we back to five foot squares? You are back to five foot squares. Entrance to the park is over at the B1 area. That's the entrance to the park. So it's over in the west. Yes. Midway between north and south. It is. With a nice path cutting through. Sounds good. Yeah. So essentially, I feel like Quinley is kind of going to be your guide to kind of show you through the park and give you a little background of the park, things like that. Can we go on this park tour with the Segway? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if they have segways here. They might have like, you know, floating discs or something you can ride on. Yeah. Are there any like QR codes that I can scan to learn more about the park memorial sites? (laughs) QR codes are just (laughs) definition spells. Um, So, yeah. Okay. So the... There are guards who do uh, monitor this area. Technically, the park does close at sundown, so we're going to have to sneak into the park. It's really easy to get in. What, the guards do not go into the park at night, but they do guard the entrance. So once we're in, we're fine. We just need to sneak into the park. Is everyone on board for sneaking in? I love yeah. you. Ready, ready. I will follow. All right. And as you look, you do see a couple of guards on a patrol, but they they kind of meet the center and they kind of work their way back out. So once they're working their way back out, that's your kind of your opportunity to sneak in. So I guess everybody give me a stealth roll to sneak in. 16. 23. 17. Poor Chuck got four. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It's a group. Uh, it's a group see. stealth check, right? Only like half of us <laughs> had to pass. <laughs> <laughs> so you're all sneaking in, following Quinley in, and Pork Chop essentially trips over his own foot and falls into like garbage cans. It just makes this big loud sound, and the guards turn around with their torches and come back around. <clears throat> what do you think you're doing here? Nobody goes into this park after sundown. Oh, is it? Is oh, this is the park. This is the park that I'm not allowed to. My bad, guys. Oh, you know, I didn't realize. You know, with the daytime, I thought the sun was rising. I, I'm just so disoriented as to what time it is. So I was, I'm not. Yeah, you yeah, know, we've been worry, traveling I'll, an awful lot. Yeah. Uh, so my bad, guys. What? Is it, don't like, worry. I'll, I'll are clear. you from like Tien? And, are you from Tien Ja or something? Um. Y- yes. That's exactly where I'm from. And I'm, I'm so sorry I, I, I got mixed up. You guys go ahead and leave us be, and I'll, I'll head out here in, right after you. Give me a persuasion <laughs> check. Another four. It'd be diplomacy, probably. Yeah, diplomacy sounds good. Oh, thank God. 17. Okay. Now, I don't know how it is in Tian Zha for you guys there, but... Here, once we have a rule of places like this, you don't go in after sundown. So, so. I got a question. I could hypnotize these. Uh, I could cast hypnotism so that we could pass through. Um, okay. I just need to roll 2d4 to see how many total hit die of creatures I affect. So. Okay. Do they get like a will save or anything like that for it? Let's see. Uh, not guards. It says guards don't get a will save for this spell. <laughs> nice. So definitely go against the guards. Well, that spell is very specific. Yes, it's it. <laughs> How perfectly it, crafted the situation it is. It is a DC 15 uh, will save. 
I like how uh, when you do this, uh, we should probably uh, have like Biggie, Biggie, Biggie just play in the <laughs> background. So let's see. T T D four. Only creatures that can see or hear you are affected, um, but they don't need to understand you. We're not in combat, so those rules don't apply. This uh, allows you to make a single request on the affected creature. Um, yeah, even after the spell ends, the creature retains a new attitude towards you. So I'm going to try. It doesn't say that they'll know that I'm trying to hypnotize them. So I think mm-hmm. I'm going to to try it. I'm going to pick my pork chop off the ground and dust them off and <laughs> say that, yeah, I'm so sorry. He, You know Taurus, right? And then <laughs> I can affect it, it, seven HD creatures. So you'd, you'd, you'd probably be fine to get both okay. of them with that. So if you would give me two will saves. You got a nine and a 12. Those both fail. Um, so I'm just going to say... He just wanted to see the park. So, I mean, if you could just, you know, turn your back this once, or, you know, looking them straight in the eye with like, you remember the jungle book when the snake had those swirly eyes? Mm Kind of like that. (laughs) Trust in me. (laughs) So if you'll just, you know, let us in this one time, we won't mess anything up. We promise. Did you want us to turn a back or to let you in let us in you can know that we're here because i mean we're friends right sure it says that you're my friends in the rules it says you're my friends <laughs> no I, I do have to warn you it's not safe in this park uh after dark but you know you came all this way so uh i suppose it wouldn't hurt just to you know take a peek inside just you know what if we get into any trouble we'll just yell for help okay I think that that's fair. He's like, please don't. <laughs> there's, there's monsters in there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you get into any trouble, just leave. Don't make us come in. <laughs> okay, I promise. Thank you. Okay. You're very welcome. I- enjoy your stay here in, in Caliphas. And I nudge pork shop because they're talking to him. Yes, of course. And thank you for letting us through. We'll catch you later. Yes, uh, maybe uh, we'll make it out to Tian Jia at some point. Porkchop just goes, hmm, right, yes, that's definitely where I'm still from. <laughs> <laughs> and I just put my fingers on his little muzzle. <laughs> and we you know, go we should be going, we should be going yeah. guys right we yes. gotta, we yes. gotta get out of here guys <laughs> <laughs> definitely lick his hand as he does that or lick her hand as she does that no because it's gonna <laughs> stick and he's gonna eat it uh, so yeah now we're in got past the guards <laughs> I'm impressed I'll be honest I thought this was gonna go sideways so fast where I had to kill these guys <laughs> That's one way to get yeah. around it. And of course, you had to have at least one of you trip and fall. Well, it's not like I chose to. <laughs> Darn <laughs> dice. But you've made it inside the gates, uh, so you're inside Restoration Park. Uh, Quinley does give you a little bit of a backstory on the park, letting you know that after the fall of the Whispering Tyrant, uh, the aristocrats of Caliphas decided to build a city park over... <laughs> A part of the buried level of the city and it was this in turn sealed off the underground sewers um, with that a half elf druid named Merrick Sayus volunteered to take up their cause and serve as the park's warden Merrick was particularly fond of working in the moonlight so she could bask in the park's beauty away from so many of the city's visitors Unfortunately, this habit also exposed her to the vampires who occasionally used the park to stalk their prey. Uh, Luvik himself made Merrick a vampire after a while, but has since released Merrick from his thrall in exchange for guarding the entrances to the underground realm where most of the city's vampires make their lairs. So that's kind of some 
backstory on the park here. Uh, he does take you here, the park's entrance. Here, then he kind of takes you over to the left path. Uh, so it's going more north at this point. And he takes you to this large alabaster statue. It's a life-sized alabaster statue mounted on a block of granite. And he says, <clears throat> now this, this statue here, I, I don't know how much you know of the history of Caliphas, it, it, but this is Ciesagia Calvaso, countess who refounded the city of Caliphas after the defeat of the Whispering Tyrant. What was her name again? That was a mouthful. Ciesagia Calvaso. Oh my lord, that's so many letters in one name. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently in the time of the Whispering Tyrant, they just like to throw letters into the names. <laughs> that's what who it sounds like the most Ustalavi names. I know none of you guys are Ustalavi, right? Anyway, a lot of those Ustalavi names are like that. It's very fair. Uh, you know, I, I think that they must have played this game. I've heard it's like called um, Babbled or Scrabble or something like that. And they just like picked up all the letter runes and just threw them out to see what stuck. Hmm. What's, what's that one game where it's like a four by four th thing and you shake up all the letters? Is it Boggle? Boggle. That's, what, that's yeah. what's happening here. <laughs> Everything was just shook exactly. up. Sasagia <clears throat> Calif Vaso. My God. Calif Vaso. Uh, so, yes. Uh, can't tell you too much more about her, but uh, she is the you know, one who Caliphas is, of course, named after. Now, as we continue moving our way through here, more toward the center, you'll see the standing stones here, kind of toward the center of the park. Uh, these stones here uh, were constructed by Merrick when she built this park. Uh, it makes this park uh, a sacred grove for druids. This is a Stonehenge. It's a little hinge. It's not a big stone hinge. It's a little hinge. Give me a perception check here. Ooh, nope. I don't notice anything. 32. Uh-oh. So 32. You notice that on some of the stones, there are faded blood stains. Uh-oh. Diego will sniff to see if he if it smells like it's fresh. As you sniff it, there's some that's kind of fresh and some that's older. So do a lot Diego. of people sneak into this park at night? Yes, uh, sadly, a lot do. I mean, they're not supposed to. The gods are supposed to keep them out of, of the park, but some do. There are some that think that these stones here are the center of druidic rituals, but honestly, it's more likely that this is where people get picked off by vampires. So is this a common hunting... I mean, this is just a, a common hunting ground for the vampires? Yes, they like this park a lot for some reason, and particularly these stones. I don't know, maybe because they can hide behind one of them in the shadows? I, I don't know for sure. But uh, Do any of us know yes. anything about vampires to know why they might particularly like these stones in particular? No, well, I don't know. Uh, that would be, yeah, that would be a knowledge check. <coughs> knowledge. Um, I believe that would be knowledge religion. Nope. I don't know anything about vampires. Uh, yeah. Religion. 27 knowledge check. Knowledge religion. Um, the only thing that you can maybe tell from why these stones in this spot is that maybe when it was originally created, these stones were for druidic rituals. So there were like blood sacrifices, things like that, that were made here. And the scent of the blood drew the vampires here. And so they keep coming back. They've kind of imprinted on these stones as a hunting ground. So vampire druids? Is that why they can change into bats and wolves and smoke and all that? Maybe. All right, putting that in my conspiracy book. Hmm. All <laughs> vampires druids go are druids. Vamp druids. Uh, 
Colleen then says. Now, uh, moving on, heading back towards the back of the park here, uh, you'll see the reflecting pool coming up. So this is a really interesting area of the park. Uh, as you see here, there's these tall columns that line both sides of the reflecting pool. This reflecting pool was commissioned by Ilmhorst Wicht. Uh, he was a scholar and early leader of Ustalov. Uh, and, and in the aftermath of the Shining Crusade, as a reminder to the inhabitants of Caliphas of the dangers the nation has faced over its proud history. So that, that's what these stones here represent. The tall columns along the south side here are carved in the likeness of Ustalavic soldiers, and the ones on the other side are the different types of creatures that these soldiers may have uh, found. As you see, there's some, like, Kelid barbarians, there's some Belks and Orcs, uh, uh, werewolves, um, uh, some undead knights of the Whispering Tyrant, um, oh, uh, that, that, that one's an interesting one, the, the Headless Dullahan. Head, headless Dullahan? Yes, uh, that's one of the Kind of looks like a rider on a horse without a head. Does he have pets, like wolves? Uh, they might. I know the, the horses uh, generally, the, the mares here generally, you know, have like flames, uh, flames on the side of the oh. face. <laughs> flames. So, okay. <laughs> Blazing so, Ustalov, yeah. But they're they're gone, right? These are all defeated and dead, or...? These particular ones, yes. These are the ones that have been defeated. Or just images of creatures that the soldiers would have fought during the Shining Crusade. Okay. So we definitely killed that guy, right? <laughs> yes. Again, apparently. Yes. Uh, I, I, find them, I find these stones fascinating. These different types of creatures, most of which I've never personally seen... Uh, maybe uh, maybe a werewolf here, maybe an orc here, uh, barbarians, of course. But um, I've personally never seen a, a headless Dullahan. Have you? Well, yeah, just outside town. Really? Yes. Well, we took care of it, but yeah. Wow. That's why I asked about the wolves. Maybe we should be. They had it had like two or three wolves. I can't remember how many. Oh. And you handled them. But no problem, it sounds like. Yeah, well, no. He looked pretty mad when he, we beat him so easily. Well, okay then. So perhaps maybe you will have your own statue here added to the park. Who knows? Oh, well, uh, uh, absolutely. Jenny just got a flash <laughs> in her head that maybe they got turned to stone and that's why they're here. I was like, she doesn't want that. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking at all the monsters Next, to make sure none of them are, cool, with, are gorgons. Right. Schedule appointment with Medusa. <laughs> uh, anyway, continuing on here, as we continue here, there is that footbridge across the pond, if you would like to take that. Otherwise, we can just continue around here. The B5 area of the map. So we continue on to the south. Now the, yes, continuing to the south. Now here, this massive statue here, um, this one depicts Soividia Ustav, the founder of Ustalov, astride his rampant horse with an upraised blade. So this is the founder of Ustalov. So do we notice anything weird? Because this whole country's a little off. Is he, made a, is he a vampire? Can we tell if he was undead when they made this statue of him? Uh, I mean, he just looks like a, a very proud soldier. We made a very creepy country. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with a name like Soividia Ustav, what do you expect? Sorry to all the Soividia uh, Ustavs out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> and continuing on here, uh, this B6 area, this pond... The Pond of Contemplation. So what should we think about? Uh, it's kind of up to you. Uh, Merrick created this pond here. There's uh, a space for her to reflect. Hey, on this pool. Um, so she would tend to meditate here. It, it is uh, 
I heard that at, oftentimes at night or even sometimes during the day, she can even be found here near this pond. Wait, I thought she was a vampire. She is, but she's very good at keeping to the shadows. So technically she couldn't reflect in the pond? Nope. Yep. There's that. You took that away from her? Well, she wouldn't have like a physical reflection necessarily, but she could reflect internally. No, but that was totally your joke though, right? Yes, but when she was still human, she could have reflected. Yeah, but she didn't build it when she was a human, right? Yes, she did. Oh, I thought she... Yeah. After, after the park was built and after yeah. a while is when this became... So, when she became so a vampire. took it away from her. She can no longer reflect. Yes, essentially. Sad, sad, sad. But anyway, moving on. Now this, this is, is Merrick's prize creation here. This, this glass house here, this massive structure, 40 foot tall, uh, easily as high as many of the park's trees here, as you can see. The interesting thing, this is a relatively recent addition to the park that Merrick created after she did become a vampire. And it does house many flowering plants imported from warmer climates. And um, it is a huge draw for visitors every year. Is this like a butterfly garden? Uh, it's more like a greenhouse. I mean, same thing. Does it have butterflies in it? No, just just plants. Do you want butterflies in it? Uh, I mean, they may... Have, I don't know how long they would survive in there. As long as they have flowering plants, they'll be good. Look, I'm trying to open a butterfly garden as a tourist uh, option here because, I mean, this is a beautiful park, don't get me wrong, but there has to be, like, that one thing that everyone goes to, you know? Well, I mean, that's what this place is. It's the one place that draws everyone in, to see all these different plants from these different climates from all across Galarian. Already bored, I don't know. It needs butterflies. Now, yeah. well, we'll see what you we'll see what you think when we go inside. We do have to go through there to get to uh, the the underground. Well, lead on. Let's go inside. Very well. He does take you up to the steps here of this main entrance. Uh, it's a small rise of steps that leads to a very wide portico. Two massive pillars of stone support a roof overhead and flank a pair of ornate gold-clad doors inscribed with sun motifs. That's a, that's a very interesting motif to have for some vampires. I think it's the same. Doors. Wishful thinking, maybe? I think... I do think that she misses her time in the sun, so she wanted to bring this as part of the decor. It does appear that these doors are locked, though. Um... Anyone apt with a lock pick? You don't have a key to these doors, don't you? Aren't you normally interacting with these with these people with the door key? I usually I don't have to go through this uh, route, okay. and normally I know ahead of time when I'm going in, so I can ha make. Yes, let me see. Do I have any lock picks? Uh, I'm not sure if I do. Searching through my. Jenny says, I, I got Stuff. this, and she has the raven's head mace. I mean, that looks like a lockpick to me. <laughs> uh, it's more of a lock like, Well, let me give it a try here. It's a disabled device, right? Okay. It is. So let me uh, take a little peek at this, see what, see what we got here. Uh, 17. 17. 17 is not enough. <laughs> I mean, it's literally made of glass everywhere. You just <laughs> one smashy, little smashy. Yes, but do you really want to, uh, you know, destroy such a beautiful place? I don't want to, but I yeah. can't pick locks, and the frog can't, and he just tried. And Unico, can you pick locks? Yeah. I might be able to. Here, let me, let me see what I can do here. Uh, may I borrow your lockpick? Oh, of course. Oh, whatever you're, use, you're using for your lockpick. Yes, well, uh, I rolled a 34 on this able device. Ooh, la-di-da. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I do believe that uh, that means that the uh, door is open. And that uh, Thwip lost his lockpick. <laughs> <laughs> These are now mine. Uh, as payment for services rendered. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you've gone up the stairway up here at C1 and this red door here is the one that was locked that you have now made it inside and you've made it just inside the door as you do get inside the door cloying humidity and heat of an active greenhouse fills this huge atrium you see exotic flowers creeper vines shrubbery and even trees growing throughout the open space Vaulted ceiling arches 40 feet overhead, supported by four thick columns, while a stone tiled path winds past each exhibit. There are over 75 different species of plants and fungi here in the glass house, and each one appears to have a different label put on it. So you can see the different types of plants here collected from all over Galarian. Are any of them like dangerous, but like, could one of them eat you or does one, you know, throw paralyzing spores at you? I mean, it's always possible. You don't have any problems with, like, being eaten by trees or anything, do you? Eaten? Hey, no. no. Hey, now. We're <laughs> a little traumatized from tree-like things chomping at us. Oh, and <laughs> <laughs> there's no catnip. Is there... Flip not so much, but Javert, he, uh, yeah, he got trash battery. He did. <laughs> so as long as, I mean, you should be fine. We haven't had any, any visitors be eaten here before or anything. So it should Aren't be fine. Are we at a park where people literally get eaten here all the time? That's at night and <laughs> there. That's by <laughs> yes, vampires. vampires, not, not, not by plants. plants. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's totally different. <laughs> Of course, I'm sure with the doors being locked, guests don't come in here very often. But the vampires haven't had any issues with being Wait a minute. Plants. Venus flytraps, aren't those vampire plants? They literally, you know, don't want to suck the juices out of flies I mean, and stuff. Maybe. But. So I guess if we see any of those, don't touch them. Okay. I don't know. Porkchop is like furiously writing down, like, don't trip into plant. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Got it, guys. Leans Got up on a cactus. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I've gone through this way. I believe going here to the left is the correct way to get to the underground. Is there, should we be looking out for, because I assume that, like, the greenhouse is generally open to, like, the public during normal daytime hours. So, like, the mm-hmm. entrance would not necessarily be super obvious. Do we need to be on the scout for that? Or does um, does our friend know the way? Or does he? Does he know the way? No, he said he you normally know the way. He normally doesn't come through here, but he knows of this route. All right. Split also- up, gang. Let's look for clues. No, let's Uh-oh. not do that. Yeah. Let's just it's it's somewhere on the floor. Everybody split. <laughs> it's underground, so the entrance has to be on the floor, right? Right? I mean, what if it's like it's in the ceiling in a pot yeah. of a plant? You take the plant out and then Yeah. Oh like and then you and then you like Mario bloop 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 yeah. down, down through the plant. Do, 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 do. What if you go through the plant? <laughs> oh, I have to get eat. Um but as you do take a few steps, uh, which direction are you going? Left well, or said, right? He said left earlier, yeah? Yeah, so we'll keep going left. Just want to make sure you're going yeah. that way. You could have decided to go the opposite direction. You never know. I'm not going to railroad you which way you go. <laughs> it's like you a video literally game. Put, go left in the chat. <laughs> 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 and it says dum dum on there too, which is. <laughs> and this is like the first time you've listened to me. <laughs> yeah, we'll go left. Okay, so going left. So you do take a few steps to the left, and as you do, these human-sized purple mushrooms let out the loudest shriek you have ever heard. <laughs> and the shriek lasts... I cast silence. <laughs> do you cast no, silence? I don't have that. Okay. <laughs> I guess I'm going, shut up! 
<laughs> the shriek lasts about 15 oh seconds. Oh my gosh. Some lungs on those purple mushroom people eaters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh, is that security for this place? Are they uh, normally here? I mean, it's so loud that like you can't like you can't hear each other talk. You can't. It's all you can hear is the sound of the shrieking for this amount of time. I mean, you can give a perception check. You can do a knowledge check. I'll do a little perception. Okay, nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, that's probably enough to recognize the little sign in front of them that says "Shrieker Mushrooms." Oh, good. Does it tell us how to make them stop? Can I do a um, survival check to see if they're edible? <laughs> you could do you're a survival gonna, check. You're scream the whole time uh. you're trying to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you something to scream about. Also, do a knowledge nature if you have that. I got a 33 on perception if that tells us a little bit more about them. <laughs> or is the name card just <laughs> what we're going to learn? It's kind of like <laughs> the thing that was hidden there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> The scream was, don't eat me. I would like to grapple the mushroom. Grappling seems like the best. <laughs> Fucking grapple. Okay, so he said it was extremely loud, and it only lasted, like, what, a few seconds? But yeah. they stopped, right? Like, 12 to 15 seconds, and they've stopped. So the- like they don't look like they're moving. They don't look like they're going to attack. They just, they've let out a shriek. Are we okay to just keep going? Yeah, that's, then? that's what I was going to do. I was just going to keep on, keep on moving. And what's he doing? Does he think they're, that's weird, or is he like, yeah, that's fine? I mean, he was startled by the very loud shrieking. Again, he doesn't go through here at night very often. Uh, yeah, you know what? If, if that was a tourist nature. thing, like it's screaming every fifteen seconds every time someone walked by it, man. Yeah, like these things oh. will scream during the day or what? They're sleep. He does not have knowledge of nature. I have knowledge. I uh, is it nat- nature or survival? Which one should I roll? Knowledge of nature. Okay. Well, then I got uh, twenty three. Twenty three. Uh, twenty three knowledge of nature that you know that a shrieker mushroom is proximity sensitive so if creatures get within 10 feet of it it lets out the shriek otherwise like they're toxic to eat but otherwise they're relatively harmless like they don't kind of attack you they don't really they don't pose a threat they just are loud how, they're also nocturnal so they are dormant during the day how close 15 feet 10, 10 feet. feet if i pick it would it scream yes because you would be within 10 feet of it all the time well, I mean, we could have used it it's as also, like an alarm or something. It's also, it, it's human sized. So you'd be carrying around another human, basically. I think that would be adorable. <laughs> just a big old mushroom <laughs> baby, just like waddling around, screaming at you. We could dress it up in, in armor and it'd be like Baymax from Big Hero 10 yeah. <laughs> or whatever that's called. I was thinking like Weekend at Bernie's. Big Hero 6. Oh. Yeah, we can never. It would be dead yeah, just, at that point. Imagine if that corpse was screaming the whole movie. <laughs> It'd be weekend. That would definitely make for an interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that does say the shriek makes it impossible to hear any other sound within 50 feet of Jesus. it. It's also light sensitive, so light can also cause it to shriek within 10 feet. <laughs> Me of too. It. Same. So do we look at him and we're like, oh, wait, we have tokens. We can move around this building. Oh, yeah. You do. Yeah. I suppose we just navigate our way around. I assume Jenny tells us this knowledge of staying 10 feet away. Yeah. Don't get too close. Yeah. All right. Run away. Run away. If you want to survive. Do we notice if there's any more shrieking mushroom babies in this greenhouse or is Look, that just localized to the, to the placard over there? looks like they were just localized by the front entrance. Kind of like an alarm basically set up. So somebody definitely heard that then. I mean, you definitely heard it. 
I was really loud. Maybe I know the guards ha- haven't come in, so and they don't want to. So maybe well, they're probably more than fifty feet out. Okay, <laughs> that's true. But what about the but vampires yes. and the ookies bookies? I don't know. Do you know where the vampires are? No, underground. Hmm. Mind you, you are above ground at the moment. Wait, is this so, guy? Is this Grey Token? Is that Quinley? Oh my god! Yes. I didn't realize that his he has an impressive mane, like a full on, just like Fabio yes. amounts of hair going on, flowing silver hair. Goodness gracious! Is that official token? It is. All right, Fabio, we, we need you to point us to help us find this door to the underground. Should we just keep going? Uh, just searching yeah, just around. Keep, keep making our way around. All right. Can we perception yeah, check uh, okay. for anything around us to indicate that there's something as a door? You can. All right. I'm going to do that. Now. Diego's was not there, so hopefully one of you do better. Uh, I have uh, 23. That's better than me. 23? Nope. Not me. Is 23 the highest? Yes. I got a whopping 10. Okay. Good. Uh, so as you make your way around this, you know, left side of the building here, uh, you see an unusual array of more exotic plants that dominates this part of the greenhouse exhibit, displaying every color of the rainbow. Hues are made more vibrant by the backdrop of an enormous mass of cactus-like vines covered with white leaves. As you stand here searching for this trap door... I was going to say, why do you say it like that? Yeah. <laughs> Question mark. It's a trap door that you're searching for. Jenny, does a 26 hit your AC? A 26 absolutely hits my AC. Since that does hit your AC, Jenny, the mouth of a giant Venus flytrap reaches out and bites you. And we'll see you next time. Oh, oh, oh. I told you. I told you there were <laughs> scary plant monsters in here. Y'all didn't believe me. And now I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs>